Alright guys, here we are, back to NRL Fantasy Analysis. We're going to be going through the halves, the centers, and the wing fullbacks in our second edition of our little On The Way Home. How do we get to the end of this season with our best ranking possible? And it's going to be getting these bunch of guns. So if we're looking at the half position, I'm thinking you're going to be needing three guns in some way, shape, or form. They have to be averaging over 50 on a regular basis, sort of 55 plus, I'd imagine, especially when you've got guys averaging in the mid-60s to you know, 70s and even clearer with 97. I think three of these guys is going to be really important. They're sort of the, the safest position going around at the moment. They get the kick meters, they get the goals, they get the you know the, the tackles and, and just you know, the run meters in general. So these guys are really important for our squad. And we're going to start up top. We obviously got Cleary and we know that now that from NRL Physio, it looks like both him and Luai are looking to be back close to round 20. If anyone has some extra rest, it would be Cleary as he has the uh, the more, you know, the tougher injury to come back from. So that's that with him. So at least, what, one, two, possibly three more rounds for Cleary before he comes back. So keep an eye on that if you're looking to get him back in, which I think most of us should be, then having, you know, at least a couple hundred to 300k in the bank would be ideal at that point. Um, you know, hopefully you could do like a cash down uh, and an upgrade to a Cleary if we get to that point. So with him out of the picture... We have two clear best half options. That's DC and Hughes. And I don't mind who you pick. Obviously, Hughes is about 30K cheaper, but he's also averaging a little bit less over the last five. So as I said, guys, in the last video, these guys here, uh, all the scores you see here are our last five week average. So there you two guys. There you two clear top ones. You then have a few other guys that are doing really well at the moment. That's guys like Fogarty, Johnson, and Moses, both all averaging 59 plus in the last five rounds there. And you see, you know, the, the price discrepancies aren't too much there. 687, 693, and 698, respectively. So with these three guys, I'm happy if you have any of these three guys. If you've got two of them, even better. Like, personally, I have a Johnson and Fogarty, uh, and I'd be looking to pick up a DCE, Hughes, or a Cleary come the back end of the year. So currently using Schuster as my um, third half as cover. The other way you can do it is Ben Hunt, if you have um, him, but I've covered him in the hooker video if you want to go back and check that one out. So they're the three guys that I'd be looking at you know, as your sort of third option or Ben Hunt there. Um, most of us kind of have them uh, at the moment or, or, or a combination of, of the both. So Pierce has finally come back and he's scoring pretty well. Obviously that's last five includes his injury affected game. So 643k, about 50k cheaper than the rest of the guys we just spoke about. Has the opportunity to average 55 plus, which we'll see through his um, you know, his return scoring here with uh, Mitchell. So Piercy there, where is he? Right at the bottom. So 643k. He has scored well over the last few rounds. When that loads up, awesome. So if we look back to the games he's played there, 63 and 47. So an average in the mid 50s there, which is kind of what we expect from him. He's a little bit up and down in his scoring, but those first three games there, uh, at the start of the season, 70, 59, and 59. You can expect scores similar to that. He only got two tries in that first game and nothing in the next two. So very consistent over that period. And you see the games in his return now. He's still made some decent tackles for only two misses um, and a couple of tries in each of those. So kick meters were down slightly from that, but you can expect that to improve a little bit um, with him not really sharing too much of the kicking duties. Obviously, Jake Clifford's there. So that, that means that... You know, a little bit less, there'll be a little bit less kicking, about 100 meters there. So, you know, five points, does that, does that cause any issues for you? I'm not exactly sure. Let me know if that uh, if that does, uh, if, or if that stops you from picking him up, for example. You got Dylan Brown, who I think is just a lesser option. I wouldn't be targeting him with so many good halves. You then have Reynolds and Munster. So Munster's someone who has more of the upside than, you know, Dylan Brown or, or PC, I think, in these ones. I think Munster can average 60 for the rest of the year. Um, includes a couple of injury-affected games for him where he's sort of you know, been back and forth. He's playing Origin. He's coming back. He's, he's about 80%. Um, so if he can get really fit over this next few rounds, I think he can be someone that you could finish the year with and, and get him at like a you know, 600K or something like that. Um, and then yeah, Reynolds is going to do his thing, averaging around that 55, and you get him at the cheapest price out of any of these guys on this list. So there you go, guys. That's the half position. Let me know if you let me know your thoughts on that. If you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm right, let me know in the comments. Just drop it down in there. All right, center position. Oh, we know that well. So we sit at the top with um, with Avrilo, and he's our obviously most expensive one, and he's the one that has been scoring pretty poorly the last couple of weeks after a couple of really big ones. Lockie Lewis has come back into the frame, and he's you know kicking more at, you know in in general play, which is dropping Avrilo's numbers a little bit. Avrilo was also getting a lot of attacking stats with tries and and try assists and stuff, which hasn't happened the last few weeks. So. You know, when you're looking at him, you're getting you're getting scores in the 30s or, for, or mid 40s, right? So you can look at that and go, well, that's not terrible, but we are paying you know for a 50 odd average from him. 
you know, where he's, where he's kind of currently priced at over his last five average kind of thing. So with that said, with that in mind, I think there's no point in trading him out. There are a fair few decent center options at the moment, but then you also got guys like Peachy who we're not sure of, he, of his role going forward. You've got Staggs carrying a bit of an injury. You've got Burton coming up on 19, and will he continue to play that role? He's going to be a bit up and down, whether he's moved to the centers or he plays in the sixth role. So he's, you know, that's that there. You've got Manu who's back to the centers, and you'd imagine he's going to be there full time unless Teddy gets an injury. So, you know, Graham's been a bit up and down with his scoring, and Gagai's probably been the most consistent. Yeah, apart from Bird um, and also Ramian, they're, they're kind of, you know, there's about four guys that are really consistent in this list. So I wouldn't be just jumping off the Avrilo train this soon. I think there's every chance Lockie Lewis gets dropped again or, you know, Avrilo gets some attacking stats and he gets a 60-70 or he continues with his kicking and, and tackling well. Um, so I wouldn't be jumping off him just, as, just so soon, but there is a chance that he loses some money too. So be aware of that uh, over the next few weeks. He could end up being like a 590, 580 K kind of center, um, but yeah, we can we can handle that if he ends up getting some attacking stats. But they do play, I think, the the, uh, the South this week as well, which makes it tough. But that's him there. You got guys like Bird, who's averaging forty seven over his last five. He was playing, you know, scoring better in the second row. I do see a little. I have a little bit of a worry for the Dragons team over the next few weeks and how they're going to play. I think they're going to struggle a little bit, which might mean Bird in the centers is going to miss out on some attacking stats. He's someone that gets in and does the hard yards, gets his tackle breaks and stuff that way, and tackles hard. So I can't, I can see him uh, having an effect on him a little bit, but not completely. So 47 average might be down a little bit, but you know we're also not expecting Ramian to average 51 over the next even over the next long period either. So you can see why he's priced at 574 is because that 51 average um, has been coming down from his sort of high 60s to 70 average at the start of the season. So. Um, yeah, a bunch of these guys, I'm, I'm seeing averages of about 45 going forward. Avrilo, Bird, Ramian, um, even guys like Gagai and Graham, I'm seeing somewhere around that point. Even Manu's 51.6, I'd expect somewhere in the 40s. And no one's really the clear standout at the moment in the centers, so I wouldn't be trying to waste too many trades moving guys around from this position. Peachy, I think, is just definitely a hold this week. Yes, if he bombs out again and he doesn't get the minutes that we need, he'll go down to like 500k, and then if that's going to continue going forward, then you can move him on from them. But I think it's worth holding on to the trades with yeah, most people sitting between 5 and 10 trades at this point. I think you should hold steady with him. Burton, I wouldn't be buying at this stage. If you have him, awesome. Keep holding on, and hopefully he improves from that 19 he got last game. He's named at 6 this week and should have a couple more weeks in that position before the boys come back, Cleary and, and Luai there. So that's that. If you're holding Manu like myself, just keep holding. I think he could be a really good third option in the centers um, and at times you know, using using him as a starter. In terms of buys, I think Gagai's a pretty solid buy from around sort of even this round or, or next. He was carrying a bit of an injury for a few rounds there in between origins. So that hurt his scoring a little bit. But when, you know, when you've got a team, especially on that left side with Cody Walker, with Gagai, um, and Johnson there, I think you know, he's an awesome option going forward. Center and wing fullback, Jewel. So if you have any any um, any injuries going, you know, or suspensions in the last bunch of rounds, he can cover both positions, which I think is probably almost the best player in this list at this moment. So if you're targeting Gagai, or if you're interested in him, I think he's a really good buy. And also Graham, you get him at the cheapest option out of all these guys there. So there's the centers, guys. Let me know what you think on that one. Again, let me know if you think I'm wrong or right. And we'll go from there. Wing fullback, finish it off. So we have our clear best option in Tommy Turbo. So I'd be holding off this week. Just I don't think he's going to play a couple of days after Origin. I just don't see it happening. But round 19 is the buy. I'm going to be getting him then. Teddy is also a great buy. He's 200k cheaper, averaging 56.4 in his last five. And I think he's going to you know help the Roosters through to the finals as much as he can you know, by doing as much work as possible. Once Origin's done, he'll be able to focus all his time and energy on the Roosters and and being a good captain for them at the moment. So I think he's a great option there. And in our wing fullback position, I'd suggest we'd want four. So four really strong wing fullbacks. So that might be someone like, you know, if we go Tommy, Teddy, Walsh, and then pick one other guy. I think that's probably a really good option. Um, we're sitting with Hines at the moment. I think we hold him until Pappy comes back, which could be a few weeks. Um, Ponga could be a, a decent fourth option there. So if, if you're holding someone like Latrell, they can be your fourth option. So just pick and choose. There's probably going to be two to three guys that are going to be very similar for all teams. And then, you know, one or two guys that uh, could be fairly different. So yeah, Tommy's a clear best option. He's obviously most expensive as well. Um, we look down, Teddy's a great option. We then go Walsh. I think most people have him and he's averaging 61.4 in the last five rounds. So keep him, keep hold of him. He's going to do a great job regardless of, of how the Warriors go. Um, and if he can carry them to any improvements, then even better. 
To'o, I'm a little bit worried about the moment. Yes, he's got a five round average of 47.4, which isn't amazing. 633K, so still holding a decent um, yeah, decent price compared to Teddy and Walsh. Um, but for him, with no clear in Luai, I don't see the Panthers going as well, which means he, on the back of it, yes, he's going to get his base, but I don't know if that you know, two, three try games are going to be there as much and it's going to be able to, you know, level out the 38 scores with the with the 75 scores that he was getting. I think he's going to be more around that, just at 40-odd to 50 uh, on, on a regular basis going forward into this one. So Latrell's there with 51.6 in his last five. He's a nice price of 583. I'd be probably holding off this week. I think there's every chance that they, you know, Wayne Bennett rests a lot of these Bunnies players. Yes, everyone's been named, but I can see them being rested and then being a good option in round 19. So let me know what you think about Latrell. I think he's going to be a really solid one at a nice cheap price. So... Yeah, look out for him. Uh, Pappenhausen, he's in there at 800k. He's going to lose a bit, a fair bit of cash when he comes back, so I'd just be leaving him out for the next period. He could be out for the next few weeks, and who knows, I think they're just going to wait till he's 100% because there's no need to, to ruin him or, or risk him heading in towards the finals. So that's that. Ponga, you'll get him at a, at a 744k clip. I think that's a very suitable price, a very reasonable price for him at about a 57 average there. 68.8 he's got over the last five he's you know so much better and so are the knights when he's on the park him and pierce together so he's going to be one of those top four wing fullbacks i believe going forward if you're holding on to someone like gutho i think he can be fine as your fourth or third option i wouldn't be buying him but that's that rts i think is a little bit uh, a little bit of a cut below all of these guys on there but if you're holding steady with him he did pick up 60 on the weekend off the wing uh, and playing a little bit through the middle as that roving kind of role if you have him, I'd be holding for the next week or two and make your decision from there, especially if you're running out of trades too, so keep that in mind. And our last two, so Ruben Garrick has just had a rich vein of form. Is a 764K. You can get Ponga 20K less than Garrick. I think that's a way better decision. Uh, obviously, if you've had Garrick this whole time, he's made a, you know, a few hundred thousand for you and, and average really awesome, and you'd be pumping up the ranks if that's the case, but I wouldn't be buying him at this stage. Um, your team's going to be great, but yeah, he's going to be back to the wing full-time. Um, yeah, I don't think he scores as well on the wing. Obviously, you know, when they when they dominate team 66 nil, then he's going to score well, but not every other time. Um, Nico Hines as well. So yeah, we're holding him until Pat comes back. I think that's just a clear option. He's averaging 60.6 over his last five, 722k. I think that's just the only way to do it. So there you go, guys. That's the uh, that's the three positions. Again, not really many cash cows or cash outs that are that are of any decent option to you. If you want to do a cash out, then just literally pick a 228k guy or the cheapest guy possible that has like a dual position or something like that who's you know not much chance of playing um so you can use them as a loop option as well um if, you, if you're sitting with 18 good players and you can you can play that loop card as well so that's going to be in there for the rest of the season as well if you're picking up some guys like that if you're holding joseph sawali like myself then he becomes a definitely a loop option as he's now out for the rest of the season so that's that guys please hit like subscribe really appreciate all the support so far obviously uh, a few people, I think, have stopped viewing because of uh, you know, lack of trades or they're getting over it as it comes to the end of the season. But I really appreciate all you guys, all the loyal listeners and viewers um, that, that continue to, to follow my stuff. I really appreciate that. I love putting out all this content for you guys. We'll catch you in the next one, team. We're going to get through my trades and also a little bit of a preview on what I think is going to happen this week after how, after Origin goes. So, um, yeah, enjoy Origin, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next one, team. Have a good one.